an enormous collection of case files that the museum has that were from the American Friends Service Committee, which is a Quaker relief organization. They have traditionally tried to help individuals as humans in need, regardless of race, regardless of religion, regardless of ethnic background. The Religious Society of Friends, better known as Quakers, is a Christian religious movement that was founded by George Fox in the 17th century. They are most well known for their belief in spiritual equality between men and women, simplicity in their rituals, and for being major advocates of pacifism. Their pacifism has led them to participate in major social reform and aid movements throughout history. The Quakers were some of the earliest and strongest proponents of abolition. They also led the charge in many women's rights and suffrage movements. In the aftermath of World War I, in 1917, the American Friends Service Committee was formed. The desire was to aid in relief actions for the many refugees that the war had resulted in. Theirs and other aid work became an integral part for the normalization of Europe after the war. And the American Friends Service Committee, along with the British counterpart, the Friends Service Council, became an established relief organization in continental Europe. It was in the 1930s when the American Friends Service Committee, the AFC, were desperately in need in Europe again. As Hitler and the Nazis and other fascist and vehemently anti-Semitic governments throughout Europe rose to power, more and more vulnerable groups realized that they needed to get out of Europe. It soon became evident that most Christian groups were helping Christian refugees and Jewish groups helping Jewish refugees. This ended up leaving a large gray area of people due to the Nuremberg Laws. The Nuremberg Laws were passed by Germany in 1935, and one of their main functions was racially classifying Jews, so that even those who had been raised Christian all their lives, if they had even one Jewish grandparent, they were considered a Jew. These laws stripped all Jews of their citizenship and of many of their rights. Many of these new legally classified Jews did not consider themselves Jews. They fell in between the Jewish and Christian aid groups that tended to cater to their own sex. Thus, Quakers made it their mission to support those that did not fit into tiny boxes. The AFSC and Quakers around the world soon began supporting efforts to help persecuted groups in Europe and get as many people out as possible. For those that could not get out of Europe, the AFSC and the Friends Service Council focused on bringing food and relief efforts to the struggling. The AFSC notoriously cooperated with the Nazis so that they could deliver aid to Jewish ghettos. When they were met with resistance by Nazi officials when attempting to deliver their goods, as was the case when officers in Poland denied them the right to deliver the food themselves, the AFSC, knowing that if they capitulated, their goods would not go to any Jews, totally pulled back their aid, which was needed by Jews and non-Jews alike so that Nazi officials would feel pressured to change their minds. For those closer to borders and more possible to smuggle out of Nazi-occupied countries, the AFSC worked not only to smuggle people out, but to help them reach America. Due to the 1924 Johnson-Reed Act, the United States put strict quotas on how many individuals from a particular national origin could immigrate to the U.S. in any one year. This meant that visas to the states were incredibly hard to come by. The Quakers amassed as many visas as possible and arranged for American families to sponsor refugees so that they could come to the U.S. The AFFC did not stop there. They set up temporary living for refugees once they got to the U.S. and helped them adjust to American life by teaching them English and other practical skills. Here, you see the faces of those who were saved from the grips of the Holocaust by the AFSC and brought to Scattergood, a Quaker boarding house that many would later accredit with saving their lives. Through these efforts, the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum estimates that the Quakers saved at least 22,000 individuals and families before, during, and after World War II. But there are those that will claim that not all the Quakers did in this period was good. The Quakers actively worked with Nazi officials in the SS in order to continue their humanitarian activities. The Quakers drew great criticism for never denouncing the Nazis and their atrocities. However, 
The Quakers thought and still maintained that if they had denounced the Nazis, they would have been branded as enemies and their actions would have been ended immediately by officials in retaliation, and they would not have been able to help nearly as many people as they did. The legacy of the Quakers in the AFSC lives on, not only in that of the lives they saved, but because their relief work before, during, and after the war became a major framework for how humanitarian aid was administered post-World War II. The work they did and the impact they had showed countries around the world the value of humanitarian aid. They were a major influence when it came to the development of the United Nations Relief and Re Rehabilitation Administration, an international humanitarian aid agency. In 1947, the American Friends Service Committee and the British Friends Service Council were jointly awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their life-saving work during the war. The atrocities of the Holocaust stood in stark contrast to the selfless aid given by the Quakers, who gave up their time, money, and sometimes their freedom when they were arrested. Some even gave their lives to do what they thought was right. Before the war, Two-thirds of Americans thought that the Jews were at least in part responsible for their own persecution by the Nazis. Even though 94% of Americans disapproved of the Nazis' treatment of the Jews, 71% of the country was completely unwilling to give the Jews of Europe a higher immigration quota. As the horrors of the Holocaust came to light after the ending of World War II, Americans realized the weight their public consensus against helping the Jews had truly had. Religious humanitarian organizations began to widen the scope of their aid, open themselves up to helping those of different races, religions, and ethnic backgrounds than them, because it was the right thing to do, and not because they were in any way similar to each other. A truly Quaker sentiment.